on Worcester News tonight, Worcester police officers discuss their relationship with the community during a public meeting. Plus, recognizing the value of nonprofits throughout Massachusetts on National Nonprofit Day. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. We begin tonight in Worcester, where the city's police department sat down to discuss their relationship with the community. Monday, Chief Stephen Sargent and the Human Rights Commission fielded questions from city residents. Our Cam Jandro joins us now live with the details. Cam? Anna, a variety of topics were covered tonight, including the addition of body cams in the future, as well as youth engagement here in the city. Tonight, I sat down with Police Chief Stephen Sargent, and he believes the relationship between the police and the city is improving. A presentation by Worcester Police and Chief Stephen Sargent examines the department's relationship with the community. We need to be, you know, open and, and, and transparent, as they say, to, you know, and let the community know what we're doing and that we are out there and we're for them. We're, we're working for them. Earlier this year, the department reported crime has seen a significant decrease in the last five years. In 2017, less than half of a percent of arrest cases had an unnecessary force complaint. Chief Sergeant attributes those numbers to the preparation of his officers. The more you train, the more confidence you have, the more confidence you have, the better decisions you'll make. And our officers are very well trained, and I go off of those three things. Worcester Police had more than 300 kids participate in programs during the summer of 2017. Expecting more this year, Sergeant says youth engagement plays a key role in their relationship with the city. That's what we're trying to get here, is people from our community to get out to, to not only, you know, uh, trust us, but be part of us. We want to get these young people involved with the police force. The department is looking into body cameras after watching Boston police test the devices. In Worcester, 19 officers would wear them as part of a trial. Sergeant says body cams are the next step in gaining the public's trust. You get to see the full video as opposed to a lot of half videos that we see. So it, I believe it will be beneficial, but that'll take the pilot program. And the pilot program will, will help us determine what's best for the city of Worcester. Now, the department says all of their crime statistics are public record. So for residents looking to keep up at home, you can just visit their web page. Anna. Thank you, Cam. Switching gears, a murder investigation in Holden. We now know the identity of the man found dead over the weekend. The Worcester County DA's office identifies the victim as 22-year-old Lennon Valario from Worcester. His body was found along Reservoir Street on Saturday. At this point, there's no word on any suspects. Family, friends and teachers are remembering the life of an 18-year-old who died over the weekend. According to the Worcester County District Attorney's Office, Chris Agnant drowned in Webster Lake. He graduated high school just last week. Our Rosalind Flaherty has more on how he's being remembered. Francis Duranami becomes emotional as he remembers his best friend, Chris Agnan. Chris is the type of person where you're with, when you're with him, you're always going to laugh. Francis was with Chris Saturday night when he died. He says a group of friends left a graduation party and went for a swim at Webster Lake. Investigators say the 18-year-old went under the water and didn't resurface. Francis and others tried to help but couldn't save him. The most traumatic thing I, I ever, I personally never even experienced a death before and then to experience it right in front of my eyes, it, 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 uh, it killed me. Chris graduated from South High just last week and was supposed to start courses at Worcester State Monday. I gave him his diploma and uh, he was very excited and happy and full of life and uh, then to to think, and I'm sure this is what's on everyone's mind, to have a young man like him, is life gone now? Grief counselors were on hand at school and the community held a vigil. Francis says seeing the community come together helps the healing process, and it's what Chris would have wanted. Knowing Chris, Chris is all love. Chris is absolutely all love. Just, we all just need to come together and love one another. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. The Springfield man who lives in a home where three bodies were found was back in court today to face a new kidnapping charge. 40-year-old Stuart Weldon pleaded not guilty. He was arraigned in a separate kidnapping case last week. Police arrested Weldon on May 27th after a traffic stop. A woman who had been in the car with him told police she was being held against her will. 
No one has been charged in connection with the discovery of the bodies. A busy weekend for firefighters in Northboro and Westboro as they respond to two separate fires. The first was a four alarm fire at a vacant building in Northboro. Investigators are working to find out how the Main Street fire started. The building was completely destroyed. Hours later, firefighters responded to another fire at an abandoned building on the former Westboro State Hospital. There's been a lot of vandalism that's been occurring there for the last few years. It's been a pretty much vacant site. Uh, over 40 buildings there are vacant. It appears to be a set fire right now. Uh, there are multiple openings in the building and where it was started was in a, a weird spot in the middle of the building. So it is under investigation. Investigators say the fires are not connected. Anyone with information is asked to contact police. Worcester Regional Airport is growing with the announcement of another flight to Philadelphia. The American airline route from Worcester to Philly is set to start in October. And for some travelers, they're excited to see more options. Our Chandler Walsh has the story. Travelers flying in and out of Worcester now have more options. American Airlines and Massport announced Monday the airline is adding a second daily Philadelphia flight. Just easier and better for the, us in the Worcester area to have better access to Philadelphia and the world and vice versa. Tim McDonald discovered the second daily flight before the announcement was made. He was looking to get to West Palm Beach from Worcester and says he was surprised to see more options for connections. Just gives you more options um, for coming back, especially because the other one was earlier. Um, I would have had a harder time connecting through it. This makes it perfect. The new American flights depart Worcester around 6 a.m. and 4 p.m. and arrive in Worcester around 4 and 10.30 p.m. The original flight times caused mixed reviews for travelers who were concerned they couldn't make same-day connections or leave and arrive back in Worcester on the same day. This is going to cut into a lot of that concern because now we have an afternoon flight uh, uh, coming in and an afternoon flight leaving. The new service is happy news to some. Bill Randall runs a Worcester airport blog called Fly ORH. He says the new flights show the airline listened to traveler concerns. And the lesson that we learned is Maybe we shouldn't just take anything that's thrown our way. We should look at it and say, it's a good thing, or, or say no, or, or say to the airline, this would be better. Randall expects the new service will put pressure on JetBlue to also add a second daily flight. If American has two flights and JetBlue has two flights, other airlines are going to look at Worcester. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. It is National Nonprofit Day. It's a day held on the first Monday in June to recognize the value of nonprofits throughout Massachusetts. The United Way of Central Massachusetts uses the opportunity each year to not only show exactly what the nonprofit sector does, but to also give back. Monday morning, the United Way staff unloaded and organized a meal packaging event for Becker College's new student orientation. Over the next two weeks, they'll package more than 30,000 meals for people in need. A bunch of incoming students at Becker College are going to learn about that and understand their responsibility as students is to make a difference. And it's that we all do this because the bottom line is not how much money did we make. The bottom line is how well do we serve people and how do we lift up lives and strengthen our communities. On June 12th, the United Way of Central Massachusetts Women's Initiative will hold Power of the Purse event. Guests will bid on more than 100 different purses. Proceeds will go to programming, reducing violence and building the health of adolescent girls. The Democratic State Convention held here in Worcester at the DCU Center over the weekend. Jay Gonzalez was endorsed for governor, receiving 70% of the delegate vote. Quinton Palfrey was endorsed for lieutenant governor, while Josh Zakum was endorsed for secretary of state over six-term incumbent William Galvin. The Democratic primary is Tuesday, September 4th. Several school systems have made the tough choice to get rid of middle school sports programs over the years. But Worcester may just be doing the opposite. Alicia Palumbo has more on the new push to bring sports back. For many school districts in Massachusetts, funding is incredibly tight and often sports are one of the first things on the chopping block. And once they're gone, bringing athletics back can be an even bigger challenge. It would require the coaches, of course, transportation, uh, cost of referees, equipment, and uh, coordinate to coordinate the games. But Worcester Public Schools Superintendent Maureen Benenda, a former field hockey and cheerleading coach, wants to try to answer the community's call to bring team sports back to the city's middle schools. That has a lot of advantages mentally, physically, emotionally, and it's going to help with socialization. Um, 
helps you be a member of a team. UMass Memorial Sports Medicine physician Dr. Nick DeAngelis says especially for middle school students who no longer have recess, regular physical activity at their age creates lifelong healthy habits. So it's pretty clearly shown that people do better in school if they have these kind of outlets. The superintendent says she's figured out a way to consolidate a new building maintenance position and free up about $70,000 in funding to provide two sports teams, both boys and girls, for each of the middle schools for fall, winter, and spring. I really understand, you know, the importance of sports for students um, and the relationships, how important they are to each other. Parents are hopeful it will happen. Because the kids wouldn't be hanging outside just doing nothing. Yeah, we we'll keep them on the phone because they will be they will be like like more more active in the sport. The superintendent will be meeting on Tuesday with the city council, school committee, middle school principals, athletic director, and members of the community to discuss this proposal. If they're in favor of it, it could be included with the school budget for the 2018-2019 school year. In Worcester, Alicia Palumbo, Worcester News Tonight.